All right, hello everyone. So this short video is really just intended to explain how the discussion boards will work this quarter. Uh, so I wanna kind of dive into this a little bit because I know that different instructors use discussion boards in different ways. So I wanna talk a little bit about how I have them set up, what I expect, and give you a little bit of insight into why I do this the way I do. So the first thing is your initial response. So each week there is a prompt for the discussion board. It is usually some sort of generative question, not an open-ended question, or sorry, not a closed-ended question, but an open-ended question. And you're going to need to respond to that initial prompt by Wednesday of each week. Now, Canvas will only let me set one due date for things. So what I've done is in the calendar, put a little reminder there. Hey, go check the discussion board on Wednesday. So in, in order to get full points, you will need to post by Wednesday to that initial prompt. And you can do it Monday or Tuesday if you want. You can do it Saturday or Sunday. It doesn't matter to me so long as by Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, you have uh, responded to that prompt. And you're going to have to respond to that prompt before you can see the work of your peers. And that is so that you're processing thinking about that question on your own. Your response should be a minimum of 100 words. Um, and you will include your uh, word count at the bottom of your post. Uh, Canvas makes it very easy. It'll tell you what the word count is. You're going to use correct grammar and spelling, a professional academic tone, all of those things. And you may link to outside sources, but just remember you're responsible for those things. So if you do so, please double check your links. Make sure that they are uh, appropriate for a classroom environment. Now, why have you do this? Why make a word count? Well, I feel like 100 words is kind of the minimum for a thoughtful, insightful response to the prompt. And I'm not really looking for right answer or wrong answer here. I want you to A, engage in a weekly writing process and B, engage in a weekly thinking process where you're kind of thinking about the things in the course. Your initial response might include references to the reading, references to other discussion, references to video lectures, or your own observations. It doesn't matter uh, so long as you are doing due diligence. So the first part of the uh, discussion board is that. <clears throat> the second part is by Friday at 11.59 p.m. You need to respond to two of your classmates. And this is one of the reasons that I have this sort of dual due date for uh, the discussion board, which is I want to give people enough time to sort of read through and find the, the posts that they find most compelling and then respond to those posts. So your comments to each of your two classmates should be at least 50 words, should be detailed and thoughtful. And we'll look at some examples here in a second. I would also say that you should try to respond to a post that has not really received any comments yet or not many comments. Otherwise, what happens is everybody responds to the first post and nobody responds to anything later on. So please just scroll down, skim them. Uh, you don't have to read all of the discussion board responses, uh, but read the ones that you find interesting. And then, you know, remember, you can ask questions, you can make statements, you know, whatever you want to do. Just remember, it is a professional academic environment. So I do expect that everybody is kind of treating each other respectfully and so on and so forth. But you don't have to agree with people. You don't even have to disagree with people. Uh, again, it should be generative. And if somebody responds to your initial post and you respond to them, that would count as a second response. And, you know, let me know if you have any questions on that. So let's look at a sample prompt. So here we go. Considering this week's reading and video lectures, please consider the importance of watching video lectures and completing all reading prior to responding to the discussion boards. Minimum response of 100 words. So you could think about this. <clears throat> you don't have to write a novel. You don't have to you know, spend a lot of time with it. Uh, it can be a kind of on the fly, thinking out loud situation. Uh, and that's totally fine too. Again, there's no right answer or wrong answer. Uh, you might just think, you know, hey, I, actually, I don't really know what the importance of the video lectures are uh, or whatnot. You know, it's entirely up to you how you respond to it. <clears throat> and then if we wanted to look at what a sample response might be, this one is 101 words. And you can see it's not a lot, right? Uh, so in this case, a student might write, since we're operating in a hybrid class, it is important to take to make sure that we are, log into discussion boards, etc. Um 
and again, you can pause and read this. It's pretty well written. It's thoughtful. It's grammatically correct. Tone is good. We're happy, right? And again, they have their word count at the end there. Now, a sample response that would be not so good, and again, in full transparency, I created these for demonstration purposes. Uh, we need to do the reading and watching the lecture so that we know what we will be talking about each week. That is 22 words. You can see that there's really not there to work with. Uh, it's kind of just saying, yes, <laughs> it's important, uh, but not really why. So again, the exercise here is in pushing our thinking and our communication as far as we can within kind of 100 words, give or take. Additionally, spelling grammar mistakes, so on and so forth. Now, in terms of responding to a classmate, a good example would look something like this. Again, this is 77 words. So you can see it's not super long. We would, you know, write social media posts longer than this all the time. That's Twitter, which, yeah, I get that. But what we have here is a pretty solid post. It's asking a question. It's clear that this person has thought about what somebody else has said, and they're trying to continue that discussion. Again, you do not have to ask a question, but it's something that you might want to try on occasion just to kind of keep that discussion going. Now, a not so good response would be, I agree, I think it's a good idea. Um, again, far shorter than the minimum. It doesn't really tell us much. And while there's no injunction against saying I agree or I disagree at the beginning of your post, I would encourage you to try and avoid starting your post with I agree or I disagree. Um, just as a way of pushing yourself outside of the easy response. So there you go. Again, I would recommend not waiting until the last minute to do these. In all honesty, they tend to be relatively easy points. If you are on time, you're insightful, thoughtful, you know, you're really engaging with other people. If you want to respond to more people, if you want to kind of have a longer thread going, that's totally fine. The more that you engage with these things, the more that you engage with each other, the stronger your learning is going to be, the better your communication skills are going to be. And yeah, it's a little bit more than just ticking the box that you did the prereq. But again, uh, you should be here, hopefully, fingers crossed, for more than just check in the box, right? So there you go. If you have questions, comments, concerns, jokes, memes, or recipes, let me know. Otherwise, I will talk to you all later.